Anthony Joshua faces late replacement Andy Ruiz Jr. on June 1st in New York after original opponent Jarrell Miller tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. Ruiz Jr. is regarded as a solid contender, although his record, inactivity and the way casual fans perceive him understates how tricky he could be in this fight. And for Ruiz Jr., it's likely a blessing in disguise that all the pressure for this fight rests on the champion Anthony Joshua, who'll be looking to make a statement as he chases the mega fights against the likes of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. With that in mind, let's crack into it. Buckle in. Let's go. Number 1. Ruiz Jr. isn't under as much pressure as he otherwise might be for a typical title fight. He is the late replacement opponent after all. He's got nothing to lose and it's all to gain there for him in this fight with Joshua. While many fans expect him to lose, probably get knocked out, sail off into the sunset with millions of dollars, Ruiz Jr. knows that this opportunity to fight for three major titles and millions and millions of dollars may never come again. There will be no shortage of motivation for Ruiz coming into this fight, especially as he has been so majorly written off by fans and the bookies alike, considered a 25 to 1, a 30 to 1 underdog in some cases. And if he can win, it will be one of the biggest upsets in the modern era. Number 2. A question coming into this fight is, is Andy Ruiz Jr. coming in a little underdone? given he's only had three fights and a total of 16 rounds in the past two and a half years, and two of those fights were against journeyman Kevin Johnson and Devin Vargas. Will the inactivity be a factor? One thing in Ruiz's favour is that he was able to shake off some ring rust recently with his most recent fight on April 20 against one of the division's gatekeepers, Alexander Dimitrenko, who's a top 50 fighter. Dimitrenko retired midway through that 10 round fight. The Joshua fight was then made within two weeks of that April 20 date, so Ruiz Jr. has effectively been in a continual training camp since February, so his fitness should be at a decent level, and that will be important if this fight does in fact go past the mid-rounds. Ruiz himself is vowing that this won't be ending early, and he won't be tiring as the fight wears on. Number 3 it's widely acknowledged that Andy Ruiz Jr. won't be able to win this fight against Anthony Joshua fighting from the outside, given that Joshua has a significant reach advantage of 8 inches. That could be a key for Joshua in this fight. The last thing that Ruiz will want is to find himself stuck at range at the end of Anthony Joshua's jab for long stretches of the fight. So he needs to get inside where he's likely to have much more success. But closing the distance is easier said than done against a guy who's largely been successful at managing range and dictating the pace of his fights, especially at championship level. Closing the distance, it may involve eating a few shots on the way in. And that's part of the risk equation for Ruiz Jr. in this fight. He will need to take some risks, but that could be his undoing eventually. There's also varying views on whether Ruiz Jr. has the foot speed necessary to help him get on the inside effectively. Number 4. If Andy Ruiz Jr. can manage to get to the inside, he needs to make the most of it and make it count. While it would be easy to go headhunting, I think investing to the body should be one of his main priorities. If this fight goes deep, working the champion's body could pay dividends later on and be a key to helping tire out Anthony Joshua. There have been instances in the past, like the Joseph Parker fight, where Joshua didn't look too comfortable when hit with hard body shots. And if he does have some success, it may help bring Joshua's guard down and open up some other opportunities. But Ruiz, no matter what, he has to let his hands go, unleash his combinations, use his fast hands when he does get in range. If he's unable to let his hands go often enough, it will be an uphill struggle for him in this fight. Number 5. Andy Ruiz Jr. is noted for having a good chin. But just how good it is, well, we will soon find out. It will need to be ironclad for this fight. The 29-year-old says he fully expects to be hit, and he's backing his durability, saying, 
get hit and hit back. And if Ruiz Jr. takes some of Joshua's best punches and keeps coming, it's going to make for a very interesting fight. But he can't just be reckless and attempt a Dominic Brazil style of, you know, eating punches with his face. He needs to be somewhat evasive, defensively responsible. And if he can take some of Joshua's power when he is hit, it's going to enable him to better execute his pressure style. And that's when it could become interesting. If his chin holds up, expect Ruiz to keep coming at Joshua all night and exert pressure galore. Number six. For Anthony Joshua, there's been a lot going on ahead of this June 1st fight, with the Miller drug testing situation which forced the change of opponent, the Deontay Wilder undisputed situation bubbling on in the background, and the added pressure involved with fighting in the United States for the first time, where Joshua does hope to earn a better foothold with fans to grow his star power and brand. It could be easy with all that going on to lose focus on the task at hand. He won't want this to become a banana skin fight, his Buster Douglas moment. And now that Deontay Wilder has snuffed out any chance of an undisputed fight being next by announcing a Luis Ortiz rematch, the sort of silver lining there is it actually takes away a distraction ahead of this Ruiz Jr. fight. Joshua needs all his focus being on Ruiz and nowhere else. Number 7 with Deontay Wilder's recent statement win over Dominic Brazil in the first round of their fight, it ratchets up the pressure on Joshua to deliver his own impressive performance. Even his own promoter Eddie Hearn has spoken of the need to return fire and produce the statement performance, which is really easier said than done. Ruiz Jr. doesn't typically get hit nearly as often as Dominic Brazil does, and typically Joshua eases into a fight, exercising caution in the early rounds, giving himself time to spot weaknesses, and then going about breaking down his opponent. So what does a statement win look like? I think a knockout inside three rounds probably fits the bill, but again, easier said than done. It's actually quite possible it takes Joshua a number of rounds to break down and take out Andy Ruiz Jr. And he may have some difficulties to overcome when his opponent is fresh and letting his hands go. And if Joshua, for the most part, can outbox Ruiz, dominate the action in a knockout or points win, I think many fans will be okay with that. I don't actually expect Joshua to come out pushing for a first round knockout. I'm sure he'll take it if it comes, but Caution and sticking to the game plan is more likely to win out here. Tell me though, if Joshua wins, what will you consider a statement performance to look like? Is winning enough or does he have to look really impressive and get a dominant stoppage early in the fight? Number 8 Ruiz Jr. is one of the few pressure fighters that Joshua has fought in his career to date another being Alexander Povetkin in his last fight. Indeed, this footage is from that training camp, where Joshua practiced utilizing movement and tying up when he needed to. So Ruiz doesn't necessarily bring too much that Joshua hasn't seen before, but he will have to be wary because you may well remember Povetkin did have early success against Joshua, and Ruiz is of a similar height and reach to the Russian. But I do expect that Joshua will nullify Ruiz's pressure, or try to, and avoid a situation where he's constantly backtracking. In previous fights where he's been forced to backpedal, he hasn't looked all that comfortable in doing so. Number 9 So how does Anthony Joshua gain ascendancy from the get-go? Well I think it starts with the jab, establishing a hard ramrod jab in the early going and making the most of his 8 inch reach advantage is going to be key. It'll be a tool to help keep Ruiz at bay as well as allowing him to set up the straight right hand down the pipe and that right hand as well as catching Ruiz with the uppercut on the way in I think will be key punches for Joshua. I'd expect Joshua will want to quickly settle into his own fight rhythm he likes to get comfortable, dictate the pace and the action, and I'm not expecting a lot of wasted energy. He'll be looking to pick Ruiz Jr. apart with hard and accurate shots, but with a view to conserving some of his gas tank should the fight drag on into the later rounds, which is where he has had some questions over his stamina in the past. Number 10. Should Anthony Joshua come through this fight with a win, which many expect he will, 
The what next is an interesting question. We know Wilder is off the table, as is Luis Ortiz, two of the guys that Joshua did want to fight next. And while Tyson Fury has been calling Anthony Joshua out and saying that he's not fighting anyone worth fighting right now, how viable is a Fury fight, especially given that Fury has stated that he wants two more fights before rematching Deontay Wilder in March or April of next year. It would appear unlikely Fury fights Joshua before then. And there's no WBO mandatory named yet. And Alexander Usyk, who could have had an automatic shot through the WBO, is currently injured. So the what next is unclear. Maybe the IBF mandatory Kubrat Pulev, maybe that will be brought forward. There is a bit of guesswork involved. But another question, with DAZN not releasing viewing figures, how are we to gauge what this fight has actually done for Joshua's profile in the United States? I mean, the fight does look on track to be a near sellout, although there's a healthy amount of uh, traveling fans. And there was a healthy crowd at the open workout, but what does that really mean? I guess these are questions for another day, but let's hope it is a good fight. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.